Woo boy, this lake's looking juicy. Juicy goodness. Well, how's it going folks and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, I actually thought it was going to be pouring rain. When I got up, it was pouring rain. It was super, super cold and I was like, gosh, I'm gonna have to make a video on like how to fish in the rain, which is actually a topic that I will discuss probably at some point this fall. If you guys haven't kept up with what's going on in Central Texas, we've been getting absolutely bonkers amounts of rain. I mean like crazy flooding in all the lakes around my house in Austin and then the College Station where I, where I go to school, it's just been constant, constant rain which has kept me from filming a lot of videos this fall. But we're out here today on a beautiful private water fishing lake. This is an organization you guys can join. Uh, the link will be in the description below. All your favorite YouTubers, uh, the whole Guggen Squad, all the Texas YouTubers, we all fish private water lakes like this and it is a beautiful place. I'm at Post Oak Lake in Bryan, Texas which is just north of College Station so should be a good time. I got to put on some mud boots though because as you can tell I'm bank fishing today and the the, uh, the mud is real out here so I got to go get my $29 mud boots that I just bought uh, and we'll get to fishing. I definitely want to teach you guys a lot of tips today when it comes to bank fishing especially after it rain when the water is dirtier all that jazz hopefully these fish cooperate. I have not caught a big bass in a long time and maybe just maybe today is the day where I break that streak of not catching big bass. Always got to stay strapped with the $30 Magellan boots. You wouldn't want to get your sick new Asics all dirty in the mud, would you? Got to protect my clout. So it's a great thing that I always keep plenty of rods strapped in the truck. I actually plan on going boat fishing today, but thought, you know what? Off of a pond video for you guys. Pond tips, all that jazz. So that's what I'm going to teach you guys today. So while I'm tying up my rods, I thought, you know what? I'm going to come down here and take one or two casts with the jerk bait just to see the water clarity. And I see that, yes, with the rain, it has muddied up this water quite a bit. I'm talking maybe a foot visibility. I'm talking probably eight inches is what we're, we're working with here. So that means we're gonna have to use more baits that are black and blue, chartreuse, that type of thing. And more, I'd say, reaction style baits to get these fish's attention in this dirty water color. Now, we've also had cold fronts and rain move in, which also means these fish might be pretty lethargic. So we have a few interesting scenarios presented us today. But, good thing is, I have an app for that. Now what app is that, you may ask? And that app is called Bass Forecast. And this is a, a company that I worked with for a while. I love the guys at Bass Forecast and what they are able to do. And basically what it is, it is a free fishing app for your phone that is a all-inclusive fishing weather app. So there's tons of apps out there. There's Fish Brain, there's whatever that give you fishing spots. And I'm not all about those apps. But Bass Forecast is cool because not only is it free, but it allows you to know on a, on a number scale how good your fishing day is going to be. So what I have here is a basically a numerical scale, I'm kind of recording my screen right now, hopefully you can see it better on the side, uh, of what my fishing day is going to look like. So I have College Station pulled up, that's the area that I'm in in Texas, and it has a number rating from 1 to 10 on how good it says my day is going to be. And basically that scale is based upon previous weather and current weather, kind of barometric pressure, rain, all that jazz. Today is going to be a 7. Now that could mean that it's going to be an awesome bite, it could mean it's going to be a little bit tough. Now I've had days where a, a three is on the scale and I've caught big fish, but I've had to slow down and use different tactics. So basically this app allows you to know, sorry, there's a mosquito on my head. And so what this app does is it allows you to know, you know what, today might be a tough day, so I might need to slow down and throw a shaky head, that kind of thing. And one thing that I have not uh, highlighted about this app yet is that you can actually go into the past. So in this area, this is, what, this is what no other weather app, not even Weather Channel allows you to do, is click the calendar button. It'll pull up the previous 10 days of weather before your fishing day. So if you are going to a lake, let's say I'm going to Table Rock Lake in Missouri, I can go to Table Rock on the app and see what the previous week of weather has been like. That way I know when I get there, I know what the fish have been used to the past week. So I can click on the yesterday. We got seven mile per hour wind, low 52.23 inches of rain. I can go further than that. I can go day before, almost no rain that day. But if I go back a week before that, boom, two inches of rain. So I know this place has been getting hammered the past week of rain and a big cold front came through. And that's one thing that I love about, about Bass Forecast is the calendar going backwards. And then of course, if you click on the middle, Boom, it'll show you the major feeding times, the minor feeding times based on the moon phase. And then it'll even re recommend good places on, to, on today's uh, fishing day for you to fish, including location, presentation, and baits. So super awesome app, I love this thing. You guys can download it for free. It is a free app. We'll click the link below in the description. It'll also be caught, tagged in the comments. But I say we catch some dang fish. Oh yes, a fish, a fish boys, let's go, let's go. 
that's a new thing. <laughs> is that even a bass? Yeah, it is a bass. Very odd, odd color. Boom! Hey, we're not skunk. Let's go. All we had to do was uh, move around a little bit, try some different locations. Got our first bass of the day. Definitely can tell it's a farm pond bass because of how <laughs> white it is. And he's definitely really cold, really, really cold bass. So thank you for playing, amigo. Means the world. Go find your uh, your little sister. Actually, your big sister. I want big sister. Let's go, not skunked. That's, that's good. Not skunked. Okay, so now that we have the skunk out, I'm feeling good. My confidence level has gone from here to like here. We want it up here. That's gonna require a few more bass though, and one big one. That's what I'm feeling. But that came on the color change. As I changed colors to the rattle trap. See, I knew that fish, at least some fish, would bite a fast moving bait. It just took a different color to make it happen. And of course, a different location as well. I did move for, oh my goodness, just missed another one. Just missed another one. And also, if you like this type of content, make sure you guys subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell as well. That way you never miss a single video that I put out. I'm out here grinding for you guys, trying to show you guys how to catch more bass on your local lakes. And if you don't subscribe and hit that bell, I can't do that. Oh, got him, got him. There we go. Second fish of the day on the trap. A Little bit bigger, I think. Oh, nope, same size. <laughs> Could be the same fish. They are feisty though. For being lethargic bass, they are uh, they're angry little guys. Boom, got him. Same exact spot as the first one. Tiny bit bigger bass, but uh, look at that. Getting the skunks out of the boat. I think it's gonna just take a lot of repetitive casts in certain areas today to get these fish to react. Cause I bet you there's more bass sitting out than just these two. And they are willing to eat if you present it in the right way. Look at that. Boom, we'll take it. We will take it. Have fun, brother. Brother Jed, you're a good man, brother Jed. There's one. Nope, little guy. Not the size I want. And definitely not like the thickness you want. Like this bass is the epitome of a skinny, skinny boy. That's like, that's so skinny. He's gotta be 10 inches long and he weighs a quarter pound. Ah, they need, they need food in this pond. I think we might be dealing with a case of, a case of too many bass or not enough forage. But in either case, there should be big bass. That's what I've noticed in, in, in the pond that I actually caught my PB in my 9.85, I never catch medium sized bass. From three to seven pounds, none of those. It's only one to two pounders and seven plus pounders. Uh, so that could be the deal with this pond as well. It's nothing but small fish. You gotta weed through them until you finally find that big one. Oh shoot, I've got a fish. <laughs> he must have eaten it on the fall because is he bigger? Is he bigger? I don't think so, nope. Same size. That fish definitely ate it on the fall. He's putting up zero fight. There he is. <laughs> yep, same exact size, good grief. Nothing but cookie cutter three quarter pounders for old TRF today. I don't know where the big bass are. There seem to be none in here. I know there are because I've seen the pictures. But right now they are evading me. So the gear that I'm using today to throw this rattle trap is really my favorite square bill crankbait setup. It is the Luz BB1 Pro Speed Spool. I actually have custom handles on here from the Luz uh, Speed Spool shop. And then I have it on the seven or six nine. Yeah, six nine medium heavy custom speed stick. It is the square bill crankbait model. Now this, this rod is actually pretty versatile for being a square bill crankbait specific rod. I throw rattle traps on it, I throw square bills. And my favorite thing to throw on this rod is actually kind of sm small to medium diving crankbaits. So I'd say the ones that dive like six to 10 feet are my favorite ones to throw on this rod. I've got it spooled up with some 12 pound fluorocarbon line. No leader material, no nothing like that. And so far it's working. Again, if you want to uh, check out anything I ever mention, whether it's rods, reels, clothes, the app itself that I discussed earlier, it's all linked down in the description below for you guys to, uh, to check out. All right, so we made it to the final spot of the day. Just gonna fish around this kind of general point here with the weightless fluke. And over my many years of pond fishing, I have found that when it gets tough, throw a weightless fluke. Now, of course, a weightless cinco can work as well, but I found that most bass in ponds are eating bluegill or tiny little shad, and a fluke is the best, best possible soft plastic to imitate that. So put the fluke on some 12 pound line, 
Nice whippy medium action rod. Should be a good combination for a last fish or two and maybe a big one, just maybe. Got one. Oh, what the heck? Oh, I totally had a fish just now. I totally had a fish. Uh, I had a bite and I was playing music on my phone and I thought, you know what, I'll pause the music and then set the hook. But nope, fish got me in a brush pile before I could do that. All right, everybody, we are back here at the truck, kind of contemplating on how this day of fishing went. As you've seen from my channel the past few times, it has been a rough, rough fall. I don't exactly know what's going on with these fish. They are very confused, I think, because I'm trying all of my tactics that I know how to catch them, and it's not quite working, especially for the big ones. Now, of course, I caught fish today. I had fun. I always want to show you guys that fishing is fun, even if you don't catch the big ones, but as a tournament fisherman, as a big bass guy, I want to catch the biggest bass in these ponds and lakes, and it didn't happen today, but I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Regardless, it's awesome for me just to be able to get out here on a school day when I have class and two hours and uh, hopefully show you guys a few bass fishing techniques to help you guys become better anglers yourselves. And as always, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing to this channel. It helps me out a ton. And we'll see you guys on the next episode of TRF.